When we had last left the Spacefarer, they finally wrapped up their business with the weird artifact seller and Walter on Neon, and upon entering orbit, they had a close encounter with some other kind. Yes, the Starborn had finally made themselves apparent. It was one by the name of Helix in a sort of strange space faring star vessel that looked unknown to regular manufacturers. What exactly was their identity? Were they aliens, time travelers, a strange government technology gone awry? Time would maybe tell. <laughs> Time would maybe tell. But for now, they would fuck off and do a whole bunch of other unrelated things. <laughs> this is Starfield. Welcome back. Zoop, zoop, zoop. There we are. Now, I'm thinking we hit up at least a few of these activities that we are incredibly massively accumulating, right? Like, for example, talk to an embassy diplomat. Yeah, fuck it, let's do that. We're here. We're already here on the correct planet. Yeah, let's head on out. There we go. Good, good, good. All right. And maybe after we finish this, well, or should we go and do the Vasco? thing that I was saying about back on Neon. You know what? Yeah, let's do that immediately before I forget about it. Right, let's go and do this one quest on Neon with Vasco before I forget that I want to do it with Vasco. Let's see. Over this way. Good. Oh, sorry, Sarah. And maybe we'll also see the ship technician at Neon. I'm not sure, though. I wonder if we'll now have a, a random chance to encounter Starborn just out in the wild. Oh my gosh. The fucking golden hour. I'm also wondering how... Done. Time to dance among the stars. I'm also wondering how we get access to stuff like the Slade in Aerospace and Stroud Eklund parts. I'm super curious about that. Okay, let's see. Where is it? Is it at Olympus? I think it was, wasn't it? No. Oh, that's the Almagest. Okay. Voli, maybe? I think so. Voli Alpha? Yeah, Neon. Okay. There we go. And... Well, let's set course, and then... We'll land from there. Just in case we get something neat. We'll see. Man, our ship looks pretty neat whenever we do a grav jump. Our tiny tin can well done on the Free Star Collective. Please maintain your current course while we scan your ship. Watchful. That's all we need. Enjoy Neon. Okay, good. Let's head on over here, and we'll land proper. Your ship's target reticle will briefly pulse red whenever you inflict hull damage on the enemy. Okay. We're still not getting um, photo mode load screens entirely. I wonder why. Hmm. Oh, look. Is that person wearing a ship tech hat? 
No, you're not. Hey there. Hey there. It is an appropriate time of day. Oh, is Vasco not with me? Huh. Yeah. Am I not being followed by, by Vasco? You? Relax. Your ride is safe with us. Huh. How odd. On multiple counts. Okay. Should we go back into the ship? And see where Vasco is? Because I do want Vasco with us for this. Let's get out okay. there and do something new today, shall we? Hey. Huh. Oh, look, you're sitting on the... Oh, uh, okay. I thought you were sitting on, like, part of the structure itself rather than a stool. Okay, sort of like a, a bay window without the window. Is what I was thinking. Yeah, what the fuck? Where is Vasco? Let's see, let's pop this open. Check our ship. Crew. Huh. Assign. Yeah, Vasco is assigned to the ship. But where is Vasco? Is Vasco, like, clipped through the ship and, like, stuck somewhere outside? Is Vasco merged with the ship still? It's entirely possible. Yeah. There's Vasco. <laughs> Look at that fucker out there. Okay. Very well. Let's get out of here. Disembark. Good. Do we need to go over and, like, manually speak with Vasco? Oh, no. There you are. I fixed it. Captain, do you require my assistance? I do. Let me know if I can be of assistance in the future. Do you think maybe that also fixed the technician who's supposed to be out here? We'll take good care of your ship. I don't think so. Hmm. How weird. You would think Neon of all places would have a technician. Right? It looks... It looks just like a, a place that would have someone, you know? Is it also bugged out because our ship is really big? Is, is that it? Is our ship so big that now they've just been, like, gravitationally pulled into our ship and they've merged with it? I'm open to the possibility. Yeah, it's always a hat person, right? No worry. Your ship's in good hands. Have a good one. Hmm. Hey there. Weird. Maybe the terminal? Nah, it's never been the case, right? I could sell some shit. Like this old earth pistol. Well, how about on the ship itself? Sell from Frontier. Oh, yeah, this shit. I should get rid of it for sure. Huh. Yeah, let's ditch these. I don't need them. More throwables. Do I have throwables? No. Okay, that's good. Yeah, how bizarre. Okay. Shit. And because I have... a skip boost pack... I can't go check on top of the ship because I can't boost up that high with this fucking thing. 
How weird. Like, you would think they would be standing kind of right here by this little, like, trolley. Yeah. Well, I don't see anyone up there. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Maybe that's not how it works on Neon. Maybe you have to go into these individual places to buy and sell stuff for your ship. Maybe it works differently here. Because there's multiple different, um... Keep moving. What do you call them? Because there's multiple different little... You're stores? Get that cleared as soon as possible if you know what's good for you. There's a bounty on me? No Aurora outside city limits. Got it? Keep your nose clean. Okay. Stay safe. How's there a bounty on me? You don't think fucking Sam Co. ratted me out when I was stealing all that shit from Slayton. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Jesus. Alright. Well, let's check here. Loose Ends, was it? No. Superfan. No. Music Star. Overdesigned. No. That's not what I'm looking for. Huh. Yeah, I don't remember who the fuck it was. But I do remember where it was. Maybe it was Mitch. Let's see. It wasn't at Sea Guards. It was at the other dude. Oh yeah, like if I go in here to Stroud Eklund. Look. This is the, like, proper business front. Yeah, the showroom. Yeah, let's just take a look. Or is this... Is this where I was before? No, this is totally different shit. Oh, yeah, what ship... Oh, what? This view and modify or buy? Oh, fuck. This is how you do it. Oh, my God. Okay. Huh. Okay, ship builder. Let's see. Add... Let's just take a quick look at all the parts and stuff. Yeah, this is what we would want. All of this shit. Oh, this is a reactor? Holy hell. Huh. It only generates 16 power, though. Isn't that less than what we usually roll with? Yeah, we're at like 21, aren't we? Also, none of these are actually Stroud Eklund parts. I guess they don't make um, reactors, right? Oh, yeah, here we go, the Habs. Okay. Wow, these are some big fucking Habs, huh? How about grav drives? No. Oh, there's Slayton. I wonder if we'll encounter stuff with all of these manufacturers at some point. Whether now or, like, in expansion content in the future. You would think so, right? in a game where you can literally explore the entire system, or a cluster of systems, you would think that you would be able to uncover something to that effect. Oh yeah, here's the type of landing gear we want. Okay. This can be something we do in between videos and whatnot. Don't they make... No, they don't. Hmm. It is interesting that they sell Slayton stuff here. That's very weird. It makes me wonder if... Slayton doesn't have... a kiosk like this. Ooh, look at that. Oh shit, it's very- it looks a whole lot like a- like a cargo hauler. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay. Do they actually have cargo containers, Stroud Eklund? No. Landing bays. They don't have weapons, right? Yeah, they mostly do like the... the habs, the chassis, you know, structural. Oh, there's some cool looking shit in here. Okay, we'll go over this in full detail later. 
let's look at their ships and we can browse. Privateer, of course. Of course you gotta have a ship with this name. Okay. Man, it's quite the nugget. Okay. <laughs> similar, similar sort of design. Wow. Um, Jesus, these look <laughs> so uninspired. <laughs> okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. This is a little bit better. Roanoke. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're doing here. I see it, and I appreciate it. Look at this weird shit in the front, as if it's going to, like, punch you. Right? It's like some kind of rock'em sock'em robot shit. Very bulky. Probably very massive. In fact, we could check. 1,351. I wonder what our current ship's mass is. Trebuchet? Or trebuchet? Whichever you prefer, I guess. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this one just looks like a fucking ice cream sandwich. <laughs> These are like hilariously boxy. Narcissus? Oh, I, someone was talking about this, weren't they? Okay. Huh. Alright. Peculiar. Oh yeah, look, there's no... There's no passage back here. Amiko Shinsado? Who are you? What are you doing here? On behalf of Strout Eklund, I'd like to welcome you to our showroom today. Our company prides itself as the industry leader in spacecraft production. We use groundbreaking technology to give us a significant advantage over our competitors. What kind of you an advantage? You can configure your desired spacecraft at any one of our conveniently located kiosks. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help. That was quite a sales pitch. That's a pretty long-winded way of asking if I want to buy a ship. I can't believe they make you memorize all that nonsense. That's a pretty long-winded way of asking if I want to buy a ship. I'm simply giving you an insight into what we call the Strout Eklund difference. <laughs> okay. Feel free to have a look around our showroom. I'll be right here if you need me. Have you ever met Walter Stroud? How long have you been working for Stroud Eklund? What can you tell me about Issa Eklund? Have you ever met Walter Stroud? He's been to Neon a few times, but I haven't had the pleasure of his company for more than a few minutes at the most. What I can say is that, despite what's been reported by the media, Mr. Stroud is a rational luminary with uniquely future forward vision. <laughs> Damn, how much does he pay you? Also, what's being reported by the media about him? How long have you been working for Stroud Eklund? Actually, I've been working here for only two years. Previously, I was an Alboron sales representative, but that type of work wasn't for me. What's Arboron? I could never relate to the type of clientele uh... that purchases weapons. But spacecraft have always held a certain fascination in my mind. It was comfortable working under Ryujin's banner, but despite all of my requests, they wouldn't transfer me to the Taiyo Astroneering Division. And so, here we are. Oh, does Ryujin also sell spaceship stuff? Why can't you tell me about Issa Ackland? Also, have you ever met Issa Ackland? How come we don't ask that? What can you tell me about Issa? When I was applying for my position here, I wasn't certain that leaving Ryujin behind was the right thing to do. I was nervous. It was Issa herself that approved my application, gave me a reassuring hug, and told me that I had to follow my dreams. She's truly a remarkable, compassionate woman. In fact, 
I defy you to find her equal in the corporate landscape. Okay. Good talk. May all your journeys be safe ones. Thank you. Do you have something hidden up there, by the way? Am I... Am I cool to just climb on top of this shit or do... Will I have to buy it if I climb on top of it? Okay. Sure. Yeah. The showroom is quite, um... Compact. <laughs> right? Very interesting. I'm surprised that they don't have, like, VR headsets or something that they put on... Oh, look at that. That looks fucking cool. Are we gonna go to something like that? It's a giant asteroid or whatever with a whole fucking something or other built on top of it with giant rocket engines strapped all over. God, I hope we can go to something like that. What is this? Huh. Eerie. There's a lot of rings. But they are all incomplete. Hmm. On behalf okay. of Stroud But yeah, who would have I ever thought that the, the showrooms relative to today, like car showrooms and stuff, would shrink? Alright. I'm assuming that these are all like concept art. Which is, this is a trope that I've always pointed out in so many of our playthroughs. I fucking love it every time when games reuse concept art inside of the game itself. It's so, it's so quaint. I like it. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go find, I think his name is Mitch. Okay, are we in the right spot? Fucking gag bank. Nah, I think we're we need to run over the other direction. You are the best If we don't have it, we can the Hmm. I get a weird vibe whenever I see one of these on the Fritz. Hey there, friend. Need something? Newells? Yeah, Newell's here we go. How can I help you today? James hey there. Welcome. If you have a moment, say hello to my wife, Rosa. Oh no, it's not you, is it? How are things going between you and Dietrich Seekart? Much better, thanks for asking. Wow, we can I don't actually exactly follow up. I know what you said to Dietrich, but he's certainly turned everything around. He's really stepped up and taken an active role in fighting Neon Security's corruption. He's even organizing the merchants' meetings with me. That's awesome! But best of all, I think we've become good friends. Which is a rare thing to come across in this city. I can tell you that. Aww. I like Watch that. Watch your back out there. Wow, I love that there's if a little like follow-up. If you buy something, I'd be happy to help. No, Thank I'm good for now. Thank you for stopping by. Heads out of here today. Okay. Yeah, it was a weapons guy, wasn't it? It was a weapons dude. Was this it? Yeah, this is it. What is this place called? Oh, fuck. The one that I can't read. Neon Tactical. Oh Feel the exact same way. It's even worse if the joke's a pun. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. No one understands you, stupid piece of tin. Uh, hey, Frank. Oh, need a weapon? Maybe some ammo? How did you and Sticks end up together? I knew a guy. We'll just continue this <laughs> from before. Ran up a hell of a tab with me. Now I'm talking thousands of credits, but at least he'd make regular payments. One day the payment stopped, so I tracked him down. Found out he got mixed up with an Aurora dealer and uh, fell from the upper platform. Since I had a legit claim, the city awarded me his property, which amounted to the contents of a storage container. Guess what I found inside. Took me a few months to scrounge up the parts, but I'd say I did a pretty decent job getting sticks up and running. Yeah, sure. You know, I've I've tracked down people as well who <laughs> owe something or the other. And I've killed them. I know it's none of my business, but what happened to your eyeball? It's no big secret. 
I lost it fighting on the Freestar side during the Colony War. I was a ground pounder, slogged it out in the trenches with the troops. And did pretty well, too, until an EM weapon took out our transport. They pulled me out of the wreckage, but the damage was done. Honestly, I, I consider myself lucky. Most of the other soldiers died in the crash. Oh, I love that. Right? It Because EM weapons are typically regarded as non-lethal. But um, just as true as in real life, non-lethal weapons, like if they're used in a certain way, can still be lethal or inflict like grievous wounds and shit like that, you know? Like, um... Like fucking shotguns and stuff that shoot the beanbags out. Or uh, plastic bullets, stuff like that. It can still be fucking lethal if it's shot at your head. Why do people give you a hard time about having sticks around? I know you'll be surprised, but thanks to my sparkling personality, I don't exactly have the easiest time making friends. That means I spend a lot of time talking to sticks and model A robots. They're not really programmed for casual conversation. The net result is I end up talking to a machine and looking like I'm out of my mind. <laughs> Hell, maybe I am. I'm hey, I got a machine here thoughts. that I talk to. And I might be out of my mind. <laughs> I don't know, I've been touching weird uh, alien stuff. <laughs> I've been seeing aliens too, talking to them. They might want to kill me. <laughs> I could track down the person who defaced sticks, if you like. You'd do that? Huh. Okay. Maybe I misjudged you. Okay. I like the idea that maybe this Model A robot, Styx, was formerly called Styx as well, but spelled differently. You know? <laughs> I like the idea that he did his own sort of uh, spin on it. I can't allow an assault like that to go unpunished. I could pay for the paint removal if you want. I'm only doing it to get paid. Why would someone spray your robot with graffiti? Yeah, why? Why the robot? Why not your shop or something? Look, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that I'm not the most popular guy on the block. And that suits me fine. You're not? But this person took it too far, made it personal. I'm not about to let some delinquent hassle the only friend that I have. What if Styx likes it, though? I mean, I could pay for the paint removal if you want. I appreciate the offer, but it isn't about the money. The lowlife that did this to my buddy calls himself Warlord. Oh, okay. You can okay. probably find him somewhere near All right, floor, they're probably a little sinister. Calls himself Warlord. <laughs> and it'll teach all the abside lunatics that nobody messes with me and the sticks. Okay. Why is Warlord- oh, speak to Warlord or kill Warlord? Why is Warlord targeting you? Yeah, quite the peculiar person to pick a fight with, the guy who runs, like, a weapon store. Why is Warlord targeting you? Warlord's one of the Disciples, one of Neon's street gangs that claims it owns Ebside. A few years back, the gang tried to break in here and rob my place, but Sticks. Put one of them down and sent another to Reliant on a stretcher. He and his buddies have been harassing me ever since. Mostly by scaring away my customers and stealing my deliveries. Warlord still swears he'll get even with me. And he came pretty damn close when he somehow managed to disable sticks and sprayed him with paint. It feels like it's only a matter of time before he gets past sticks and I'm done for. Alright, well shit. Let me see what you got. By the way, have you heard of this uh, Merchants Alliance Union? <laughs> do, you, do you have anything to say about that? No? Okay, let's see what you got. Help yourself. Okay. Boom, boom. Anything new? Oh, there is some new stuff. A Tonto. Damn. Have we seen a, like, literally named Tonto before in a Bethesda game since Morrowind? I'm not sure. The buzz cut. Yeah, we've seen that. Anything else new here? Suppressed XM2311. Oh, it also uses 45 just like the old Earth handgun. Oh, Scouts Refined Eon. Okay. 
Okay. I wonder how many tiers of weapons there are, right? You know, we've we've seen modified and shit like that. I wonder if we'll see something high. Ooh, Magpulse. It's a rifle. God, it looks so cool. Huh. I wonder if you can modify them to shoot uh, non-ballistic damage. I'm sure we'll find one before long. Bridger here, a breach, big bang. Oh uh, yeah, the particle beam shotgun. I almost forgot about it. Okay, good stuff. You know, sticks. Crime in this city gets worse by the day. Vandals, thieves, gangs. I'm sorry, I did not understand your query. Please okay. Rephrase. What don't you understand? Let's see. Are we tracking this properly? Frank Rennick at Neon Tactical has asked me to find a gang member named Warlord who vandalized his security robot. I should speak to Warlord at Euphorica. Motherfucker went with Warlord. <laughs> Sound like a fucking Elder Scrolls generic bandit title, right? Oh, I'm level 37. Now the bandits are called Warlords. <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing Nordic carved armor. <laughs> we show up. They're fucking like wearing a fucking amulet to Bella or some shit. Okay. Let's head over here. Let's get our special tracker going on. Well, this is of little help to us. Can we even get to our destination from- yeah, okay, now it's showing up. I guess we were too far. It couldn't figure out the pathing. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to feel it. Am I still addicted to Aurora, by the way? <laughs> Hang on, can I, can I have a look here at this? Status? Yeah, I still have a stimulants addiction. That's fine. We should probably see a doctor at some point, though. Okay, let's settle this once and for all. Velocity or Chimera? Stay that way. You kidding? Chimera all day. Why do you think I'm here? I don't know. Chimera's nice, but Velocity, that will get you hammered. See, you just proved my point. Down your third velocity, and you're out cold. By the third Chimera, you're floating on frickin' cloud nine. I don't know about you, but that's where I'd rather be. Yeah, I guess you're right. Where the hell did Micah learn to mix a drink like that anyway? Well, let's face it, some people are just... gifted. <laughs> okay. Hey, here's our uh, person. Here, let me do a hard save so we can get a... picture of him later. I'm an artist. If you want. Oh shit. You like You're dead. You like art? Sure, I like art. I don't like art. I don't know, but I know what I like. <laughs> I don't know, but I know what I like. Sure, I like art. Then you should see the tag job on the robot at Neon Tacticals. My best work. Frank Rennick wants retribution for what you did to Sticks. You consider yourself an artist? Why do you hang out here? Are you in a gang? You consider yourself an artist? Only when I have a knife in my hand. The rest of the time, I just paint. Why do you hang out here? Euphoric is home for people like us. And by people like us, I mean killers, thugs, and thieves. Now, I haven't killed anyone in a while, but that just means I'm due. Right. Okay. <laughs> I almost thought that this would be a fun lesson, maybe on... Uh graffiti you know and vandalism right that, not necessarily uh in that like all vandalism is evil or whatever right but more so to take a more nuanced approach right like you maybe someone likes the no, look of you. sticks or get a different paint job or something and that still may be the case because we're not just openly opening fire on their fucking like kotor ass <laughs> looking hat are you in a gang are you in a gang? <laughs> you sound like a middle-aged bank teller. Don't I look yeah. like one, too? I'm in a gang. The Disciples. Maybe you've heard of them. 
<laughs> delivery was fucking great. Okay, hang on. Lost, off Hold up, let me take some drugs real quick before I do this. Hippolyta, I think it's the good shit. I like to spray. Sometimes with paint, other times with bullets. Oh shit, that's what you say in a character select screen. Frank Rennick wants retribution for what you did to sure. Sticks. Thanks, <laughs> that Cyclops should be thanking me. I dressed up his toy real nice, gave him a total makeover. He's lucky that's all I did after what that thing did to my crew. So you admit to the crime. Why did you tag Sticks? Did Sticks really kill members of your crew? Why'd you tag Sticks? I thought it was pretty clever. If I trashed it, it'd stink for a bit, but he'd get over it. So I took a can of spray paint and put my tag on it. Now every time that Cyclops opens up that eye, he's gonna see my art on his buddy. Did Sticks really kill members of your crew? We tried to rob his store and reload our crew. That's when his little toy unloaded on us. Lost some good disciples in that group. If anything, that freak should be paying me. So you admit to the crime. I kind of hate that this is all, <laughs> all we have to say here. <laughs> all right, so you admit to the crime. Yeah, I do. And I'll make art out of your guts if you step out of line. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Persuade. You're going to pay for the damages. Attack. I'm going to get those credits from you, dead or alive. Uh, I'll get back to you. You're going to pay for the damages. And what makes you think I will? These drugs I just took. There's no reason for us to have a problem, is there? Just pay up and I'll leave you be. Rennick's not all there in the head. Do you really want him as an enemy? What a thing to say. Yeah, it's hard to predict crazy. Never know what he might do. You don't want to mess with me. Pay up. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. You don't, you never know what he's going to do. I love to hear that. <laughs> I'm still willing to talk. Okay. You don't want to mess with me, pay up. You got the strikers to worry about. Don't waste time with Rennick. You know, you're really starting to piss me off. <laughs> you got the strikers to worry about. Don't waste time with Rennick. Except oh, that's shit. why we hit up his store in the first place. We need more firepower. So I suggest you tell that one-eyed freak to go cry somewhere else. I'll get back to you. Yeah, sure you will. Okay. See you soon. Do you have anything to I'm say? Watching. No funny business. I mean, can I just like... Can I just get him? The enemy is approaching. Don't take a wine, please. Of course. Coming right up. Thanks, Micah. Oh. Okay. Love the vibe of this place. <laughs> yeah, it's a great vibe, isn't it? This is just a great fucking banger vibe. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, they still got it, huh? That's the good shit. <laughs> Fucking just blast two motherfuckers in the bar. Someone approaches. I love the vibe in this place. God, I'll you know, wine, when we were playing Skyrim, I was I was almost worried please that they enjoy. would get rid of shit like that. Thanks, right? Man. That's part of the magic for me. <laughs> Let's be real. Okay, Warlord's credits. That's a hundred grand. Okay. <laughs> Man, is there a way in which I can just keep it? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> I'm gonna take the weapon, too. I can pawn it off somewhere. <laughs> Maybe we can sell the weapon to the fucking guy. Alright. Hey, love the vibe here. Vibes are immaculate. Good stuff. <laughs> Fuck yes. I mean, we tried talking with him. We tried being reasonable. Rather be doing this than getting mixed up with the gangs. Okay, let's head on back over to where we ought to go to. The colors. Hell yeah, dude. I know what you're talking about. I was doing some Aurora just a... Uh, I don't know, a few videos ago. What are videos? Shit, I don't know. We're, you're in one. <laughs> You best start believing in videos, citizen. You're in one. <laughs> what the fuck? Let's do a quick save. 
All right, I killed him. <sighs> what can I get you? Warlord isn't going to bother you anymore. Good work. I hope you made him squirm. Not really. <laughs> I did one better. I killed him. He's actually pretty civil. I had to instigate the fight. He agreed to stop. There's no point kicking someone when they're down. You can lie about it. <laughs> Should I just come off as like a ma- Which one is more fucked up? I think me saying he was actually pretty civil. I had to instigate the fight. I like, I like how fucked up that is. I'm gonna say it. I had to instigate the fight. He was actually really, really chill. Um, but, uh, you know. <laughs> what can I say? Him with the old Morrowind intimidate disposition shit. All right, I had to instigate. So you shut him up for good. Well, that's not exactly what I asked, but it's what he deserved. <laughs> Jesus, he's fucked to up that too. Had it coming is the understatement of the century. Yeah, Thanks. he's spray painted Sticks the fucking gonna robot. He deserved to die. Rags, the works. <laughs> he's gonna look brand new. Oh, and here for your trouble. You know, Sticks, crime in this city gets worse by the day. Vandals, thieves, gangs. I'm sorry. I did not understand your query. Man, he only gave me 3k. What don't you understand, Styx? Crime happens because the people in charge let it happen. I'm sorry. I did not understand your query. Please rephrase. Yeah, you're sorry. You're always goddamn sorry. Try actually doing something about it for once. I can't believe he's disliked. <laughs> I can't believe he's an outcast. God, Frank sucks. I can't believe I killed that guy for him. <laughs> eh, what can you do? All right. Who is this? Damn, you're out here really trying to pretend to be normal after you're, <laughs> you're definitely on Aurora. Okay, let's see. Can we go over to Slayton's again? Hmm. Let's take a look here. We could pop into the Trade Authority. Oh yeah, I need to sell off some shit. Need to move. If it's too hot to handle, we can take it off your hands. Yeah, let's do business. Always happy to take your money. I love that he smiles at the end of that. I fucking love that. There's a little smirk. Okay. Is there anything else here that we ought to take? Nah. Okay, let's get rid of this shit. Oh. I've been carrying around this? Okay, well, yeah, this is a perfect place to sell it. Oh, no, wait. You only got any money. Hmm, I could buy some Neurojack. Let's do it. Okay. Fuck it, I'm just gonna sell this and take the hit. Time to move on. Okay, okay. Dang, what a shame. I thought Vasco would have more to say. <laughs> Maybe not. Alright, should we go pick up Andresia or someone? Right? I feel like we ought to. We ought to get either Andresia or Barrett. Because we haven't had them in our uh, in our party, so to speak, for quite some time. I don't think Vasco has affinity in the same way that humanoids or human companions do. One quiet day. There we go. Fast travel there. Let's take off. Good. Lifting off now. Good God, that's terrifying. It's, it's like we're just a few meters away from just ripping the, like, lightning guard or whatever it's called off the top. Pumping retros. Orbit achieved. Stabilizing. Done. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go all the way back to Alpha Centauri. Shit. And Jemison. Now let's set course. Do the jump. Great. Let's 
and then we will. We'll go pick up Andresia, I think. And then after we hang out with Andresia for a few quests, we can meet up with Barrett again. It wouldn't be so bad if we had a bigger ship capacity, you know? For our followers. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go to... We'll just immediately go to the lodge. See, I thought I was being clever having Vasco with us for this. What a fucking fool I was. That said, I still think Vasco is the key to something here. The fact that Vasco is just old as shit is very important. Damn, Vasco is pieced out. Okay. Where is... Hey, there you are. Just who I oh, wanted hello. to see. Hello. Never would I have imagined to encounter something like the Starborn. Now I feel that rather than having answers, we only have more questions. Right. Oh, I thought I already checked in with you. It's really incredible, isn't it? Always knew there was something else out there. We shouldn't be that surprised. Space is so vast, it must be full of things we couldn't imagine. If we tried to tell anyone, they'd call us crazy. Eh, we shouldn't be that surprised. Space is so vast, it must be full of things we couldn't imagine. I suppose this proves that idea succinctly. Regardless of how impossible they may have seemed before now, I must say that I do not like being threatened by anyone. They're clearly trying to scare us away from something. No one's going to stop us. We've come too far. I took it as less of a threat, more of a warning. They made it sound like we're the bad guys, somehow. I mean, maybe we are. Hmm. They're clearly trying to scare us away from something. If so, what would that be? I mean, the artifacts. Clearly, the Starborn are connected to the artifacts, which would mean that they are also connected to that temple you found. Did they make these things? Have they appropriated them this all implies there is something more something we do not yet understand exactly yeah and it's like i said it's so weird that they don't want us fucking around with these things and yet on site the security with these with the artifacts with the temples there's nothing you know nobody's guarding these temples the artifact pieces that we find are like buried under fucking ground most of the time we need to find more of the artifacts. They're the only lead we have. If we keep going, I suspect we're going to run into the Starborn again. Things just got a lot more complicated. You're not worried, are you? You're not worried, are you? I am never worried. Cautious, perhaps. It is always what a horrible thing to, to say to someone. For the unexpected. This is just a bit more unexpected than usual. It seems to be how things go here in Constellation. What a great way to immediately make someone self-conscious and worried. <laughs> You're not worried, are you? <laughs> it's the kind of thing that you say to someone for your benefit, right? You're not trying to help them or make sure that they're doing all right or make sure that they're not worrying. You're doing it for yourself. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hmm. If we keep going, I suspect we're going to run into the Starborn again. Yes. Given our first interaction with them, that seems likely. We will need to be on our guard from now on. They seem to know much about us. Perhaps we can learn more about them to make it even. We should return to our search then. There's still so much to do. Okay, good. Yes? You ready to head back out? I have sharpened the blade for this very occasion. Just in case we need it. Okay. Vasco is no longer following. I don't even know where the fuck Vasco is, frankly. Alright. You know, in thinking about this Mateo situation more... This, this puts Mateo at the tippy top of my 
is probably going to die list, right? The fact that Mateo has every reason to be a follower, but for some reason is not. Hmm. Okay, let's head on out. And, um... <laughs> oh, you know what? This... I was about to say, maybe Andresia isn't the character that we should take to this embassy situation, especially given the, given the like, House of Arun shit that we understand vaguely popped off here. But maybe that means that she's the perfect follower to take. <laughs> you know? Maybe she's exactly who we want. All right, let's head on over this way. Good, good, good. Mm. I do appreciate that Shapes. not every meter of land was plowed under to build this city. This tree is far too grand for such a fate. Yeah, wait till you hear what's going on in the inside of it. It's turning into a liquid. Oh. What's all this over here? Man, this really looks like a Starfleet planet building. Holy shit, it looks so, so much like Starfleet Academy or whatever the fuck. Just the way in which it's angled, like, the, the source material for it could not be more obvious. And I say that in, in a way of like, oh my god, it's right before me, <laughs> right? by the Freestyle Collective's ragtag oh. fleet, both sides decided the time had come to bring the colony war to an end. So, the two parties came together to negotiate the terms of the armistice. Fleet sizes would be capped, mechs and xeno weapons outlawed, and all research related to those fields would be kept under lock and key in their own special archive. Which actually rests below our feet as we speak. Hmm? And while these new restrictions transformed the settled systems overnight, entire economies were upended with the flick of a pen. They also marked the start of something critical. Cooperation between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective for the first time in decades. A pledge between the powers for a more harmonious future. Thank you for listening. What? <laughs> Look at this! Oh my god, this looks fucked up as shit. <laughs> Look at this. this looks so fucking sinister. Oh my god, this looks so fucked up. Hey, what's going on, historian? The archives themselves are off limits, but you're free to look around up here. Huh. Okay. Look at this shit. Hey, look at your fucking cool shirt. Okay. I respect it. Do you have anything to say? You should see the setup they've got for the Vanguard orientation inside Mast. Makes this space look amateur. Right, some fuck. Oh my god. What the fuck? I mean, I think this one is supposed to look deranged. Because it's like, yeah, we have to negotiate peace because we're... We're doing it over a load of dead fucking bodies. But even these which are... Right, these still seem evil as shit. Right? <laughs> like, my god, this is just like some fascist propaganda. <laughs> huh. Do we have access? Oh. Huh. Safeguard the past, secure the future. We recall the cost of unfettered war. We stand as the bulwark of peace. Huh. <laughs> Look at this. This looks sinister as shit. Hey, Archive Guard. You got your clearances? Good. Do I? House of Arun? I have clearances for this? Can I get in? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my god. By order of Armistice Article 1361A, there shall be 
established a central archive guarded by three parties, the Freestar Collective, House of Arun, and the United Colonies, for the collection and protection of all knowledge, research, and documentation depicting, describing, or in any way related to technologies and mechanisms banned by this armistice. It shall be governed by the following laws. Access to all information in this archive will be mutually managed by all three parties. That's fascinating. The House of Arun is included. Access is only permitted by unanimous agreement of authorized factional representatives. The facility will be under the direct control of no sovereign faction, with no... Well, <laughs> feels as if that has not entirely worked out, given, <laughs> given the fact that there's an entire UC city built around this one. With no single party permitted to overrule the others, all decisions regarding matters pertaining to the archives must be unanimous. 3. Any attempt at unauthorized access will be considered an act of aggression against all parties. Each party commits to defend the others against any such attempts. If you have any questions, please contact Mast Public Relations Desk. What the fuck? Master lock. Is this like a card reader? Holy shit. This facility is governed under interfactional treaty regulation. Illicit actions or behavior will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. What the fuck is going on? Oh, look. These are like, um... Big boxes of paper, I guess. Though maybe not literally paper. I can enter here. No visitors. All personnel require mass security alpha clearance. Do I have mass security alpha clearance? What is this? Panel door. Huh. Well, that definitely looks like something I could fuck with. Weird. A whole bunch of desktops. What the hell happened in this room? It looks like a bunch of shit was, like, rifled through. Hmm. Dude, the vibes here are real bad. And I'm guessing you're Freestar? Not supposed to be talking to you. Right. Huh. That's fascinating as well, right? Like, imagine if they were in cahoots up to some fucked up shit. Look at the texture on the floor here. Oh my god. But, um, the third party isn't here. House of Arun is not here, which I'm assuming that's their symbol. We've seen their, their weird writings or whatever. Huh. Man. I wonder why House of Arun attacked. Obviously, they say it was some sort of, uh, they just went buck wild. But what if that's just what they want you to think, dude? You know? What the fuck? Man, there's some juicy shit going on. Okay. Let's head over here to uh, the embassy. yes. They build a monument to the people they lost, but not the people they killed. <laughs> fuck yeah. Okay. Holy shit. Fucking get him, Andresia. I don't even know what monument you're talking about. Is it this? Oh, uh, yeah. Man. I didn't realize Andresia had some fucking takes. I'm here for it. Okay. The guards will check you. I cannot help but notice that the Colony War Memorial is in direct line of sight of this embassy. I suspect that was very much intentional. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Freestar Diplomat. Welcome to the Freestar Embassy. Is there something I can help you with? Representative... Kaisholm? Chisholm? Is being held at the spaceport by UC Security. One of your representatives forgot his diplomatic visa. Who can enter the embassy? Who can enter here? Unless you have an appointment, only Freestar Diplomats and security members are allowed inside. 
And because you're asking the question, I take it you don't have one. Well, one of your representatives forgot his diplomatic visa. You can't forget what you don't need. Diplomatic visas haven't been in use since the colony war. No, this sounds to me like a guard bought a red uh. marker and colored some tape. I'll make a call to Sergeant Yumi and see if I can't get this squared away. Thanks for the tip. Oh, I think I have something to talk to a Sergeant Yumi. Oh, that's fascinating. Huh. Nobody sees the ambassador without an appointment, and you don't have one. Damn, they have cloning technology. That was the same guy that was in the other archives. Man, now I'm just seeing shit everywhere. I was, I was like, man, look at this, it's a false door. <laughs> okay. Huh. Oh, I love this. I love that there's this fucked up veneer going on here. Alright. When next we come back, maybe we will check in with this Sergeant Yumi. I'm almost positive we have a, a like, activity to do that. Right? Pretty sure- yeah, talk to Sergeant Yumi. I don't know why, but we need to do it. Where are they? Oh, all the way over there. Alright, yeah, when next we come back, we're gonna maybe futz around and do some more junk here on New Atlantis. There's a lot going on, more than meets the eye. But, uh, that said, uh, the- the hand isn't played that closely to its chest. <laughs> you know, they want you to- to get kind of stuck on it, you know? Okay, however, course, if you'd like to stick around, we will be doing a little bit of reading. And what will we read this time, but... Well, let's see, let me flip my notebook page around here. Oh, how about War of the Worlds? Kind of fitting. Okay. War of the Worlds. Book one. The Coming of the Martians. One. The Eve of the War. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own. That as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient, na transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Uh, with infinite complacency, men went to and fro over this globe about their little affairs, serene in their assurance of their empire over matter. It is possible that the infusoria, never seen that word in my life, under the microscope do the same. No one gave a thought to the older worlds of space as sources of human danger, or thought of them only to dismiss the idea of life upon them as impossible or improbable. It is curious to recall some of the mental habits of those departed days. At most, terrestrial men fancied there might be other men upon Mars, perhaps inferior to themselves and ready to welcome a missionary enterprise. Yet across the gulf of space, minds that are to our minds as ours are to those of the beasts that perish, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic, regarded this earth with envious eyes, and slowly and surely drew their plans against us. And early in the 20th century, came the great disillusionment. The planet Mars, I scarcely need remind the reader, revolves about the sun at a mean distance of 140 million miles, and the light and heat it receives from the sun is barely half of that received by this world. It must be, if the nebular hypothesis has any truth, older than our world and long before this earth ceased to be molten, life upon its surface must have begun its course. The fact that it is scarcely one-seventh of the volume of the earth must have accelerated its cooling to the temperature at which life could begin. 
It has air and water, and all that is necessary for the support of animated existence. While the title may seem obvious, H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, first serialized in magazines in 1897, is actually believed to be a commentary on Victorian prejudices, insecurities, and values. Really? I never once heard that to be the case. I've never actually read it myself. I've seen uh, the fucking Tom Cruise movie, uh, and it, it, I did enjoy that movie. But that's very fascinating that it would be commentary on such a thing, right? Good lord, when did the Tom Cruise movie come out? Was that commentary on any particular um, stuff that going on in, in American society, at least at the time? I could see that being the case, because I was quite young when I saw it. Maybe it flew over my head. Or maybe it was it was just meant to be a dumb action movie without um, much to like garner from it. That said, I don't think that would be the case. I feel like that's pretty rare. Though maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, not a bad read. I, I enjoyed reading this. I would... Like, especially for something from 1897. I would read this. War of the fucking Worlds. I would read it. That was pretty... That was some good, fun exposition. Alright. Yeah. There you have it. A good one. A classic. H.G. Wells. Uh, when next we come back, we're gonna look around New Atlantis. Until next time, please take care of each other. Mm -hmm.